Now, time to talk about the African Culture and Wellness Festival, which aims at uh, igniting the journey back to, uh, which aims at igniting the journey back to a lot of um, uh, the journey back to our roots, uh, so to speak. And uh, we also know that this event um, will be taking place here in Accra. We'll be having um, special guest, uh, Muta Baruka. He's, uh, he's an artist, he's an activist, a spoken word person. I've um, listened to him several, I've seen him physically, talked to him as well. But uh, we have one of the other special guests uh, who will be highlighting the whole event also in the studio. It's themed, building the solid foundation for our future uh, global young African leaders. It's the fourth in the series, we're told. It's uh, a festival that we all need to be very much interested in. And so we have um, a guest in, in the studio, and Dr. Sherida Yazid, uh, a naturopath, is in the studio also with uh, New Body Products Ghana as a Chief Operating Officer, a Holistic Lifestyle Consultant, mm -hmm. uh, an African Dance Instructor, and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. And we also have Dr. Uh, Paul Gars in the studio, uh, a Master Healer, and um, he is uh, one of the guests, is, uh, special guests for the event alongside Muta Baruka and uh, respect to you. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Paul Gass. Good to be here. Okay, so, uh, and so you have to tell me about the whole event. Uh, what's this whole event about? Yeah, it's about, it's about just what it says, African culture and wellness, preserving African culture and dealing with the wellness of our African people globally. You know, a lot of times we have a lot of the same problems um, when it comes down to our health issues, and it's because we have gone away from our natural ways of being, so we're, so we're here as uh, naturopaths, naturalists, uh, pan-Africanists, to bring back that uh, platform for us to be able to display so we can bring back you know, our um, African culture, our African pride, and get our health in order. You know, We need to live long. We used to live long, long, long lives. And so this is what the festival is about. And we're just making it festive. OK, so, mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're bringing, apart from the two special guests, you're bringing people from all over to come and converge at the event site? Yeah, people will be coming from, um, from everywhere. As far as the event, it, it attracts all, a lot of different people from different backgrounds. But for, for the most part, it, it's definitely a lot of people who are Pan-Africanists and people who are into the wellness sector that, um, that came together with us to be a part as far as doing workshops, presentation, or dis different artists, the concert. We're all of the same mindset and concept. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Paul Gaz, you grew up in Tennessee, somewhere around there. Right. And, and we know that, uh, that that means that you would have been very instrumental in the civil rights movement. Were you? In the civil rights movement, were you? Okay. Were you? Was uh, that part of the civil rights movement? Yeah, kind of. Very much interested, uh, I mean. I'm yes. It, uh, I'm definitely a part of it. You know, the, uh, it's not something, you know, basically anybody wants to remember. Yeah. But uh, because even to this day, the civil rights movement is still going on. And it's, it's, it's really, as far as I'm concerned, it's, no, it's not better. It's just that there's a change of tactics. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's like, you know, you, you're going in one direction and you're trying to correct that. And then when you think you got it corrected, it goes in the other direction. So it's like, you know, you think you're free until you reach the fence. <laughs> and then once you reach the fence, you realize that you're not free yet. But, yeah. but, but, but let's talk about this festival. What, what do you make of um, uh, the current state in which we live as not only Africans, but people in the diaspora and, and, and the whole world in general? Well, yeah, see, basically, well, you know, putting it point blank, is that the original, going back, say, to Africa, before all these other countries and stuff started, was even into existence. We had different beliefs, different diets, different everything. We had long, long lifespan. Sickness was something, you know, that basically you could almost turn out the say the Colosseum, just because one person got sick, to find out you know, why did this happen? 
But today it's like the system is set up that you're supposed to get sick. So everything that's going on, it takes us away from our original selves. So it means, you know, when we were living to be three, four, five hundred, now we might be good to make it past 50. <laughs> because the way the system is set up, you're worth more money dead than you are alive. Wow. Who benefits if you live less? Or who benefits if, if that is how the system has been set up? Oh, well, it's usually, you know, the, I'm going to use the word, the people that are in control of the world. That's very conspiratorial. Yeah. yeah. In other words, it's like the system is made up for them and them only. And anybody else that does something different is actually breaking the law. Mm. Now, breaking the law is not wrong. It's just that somebody set up some laws and you broke the law. But that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. You know, right is right, and the law has nothing to do with what is right. But if you benefit from it because somebody broke your law, then you're going to continue to have that to go on and on and on. It's, a, a good example is that we here in the States, the American dream. Yeah. But see, the American dream, you know, for black people is that if you got more than $10,000, you're going to be audited by the IRS and the tax bureau and everybody else if you're black. But if you're white, that figure has to go over $2 million before you would be audited to find out, you know, where the money is coming from. And see, $10,000 being the, the dream of anything is not going to make your dream come true. So. It turns out, you know, that we have to figure, well, it's already figured out. We just have to use the ways that we use back before all of this stuff started to happen. And we do that, you know, you ignore that that is going on, and then you go back to your roots. And part of that roots, you know, is actually the diet and what we eat. And the, when it comes to sugar, meat, and dairy, that, that was never a part of our diet. But today, it is our diet. And it, it, if usually if a person is away from the sugar, meat, and the dairy, they'll have a good, healthy lifestyle. Wow. Mm. Great. Yeah. Very res resonating. Yes. Now, mm. how, how do we not confound, confound ourselves in all this when we know that we find all this around us in, in media, in advertorials, in, in books, in literature, even in, even in children's literature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. your child wants, wants something to drink, drink and w wants to go for a soda. Yeah, well you have to teach them from the womb. You have to teach them from when they first, and, and when I say from the womb, the mother who's carrying the baby, she should start there as far as her diet, as far as the things that she eat. And this is Africa. This, is, this was our tradition. A pregnant woman had certain foods that she ate in order to be able to have a very strong, healthy child. But now today, the immortality rate is so high. You know, we're talking about so many um, babies dying or even mothers dying during, um, you know, birth. So we, we've gotten so far away from it. So for me, for example, I have six children and three grandchildren. Each one of my children from pregnancy, I always made sure I was eating the right type of foods, taking the right type of supplements, uh, still exercising. And I would talk to my children in the womb. I would read to them, I would play music. And when they came and when I gave birth to them, I started from the very beginning, I would give them herbal medicine from the, day, from the first day, you know. And then they, they became used to having certain tastes when it came down to fruits and vegetables. It was a part of their normal life where my friends, See, we're going through the same thing. It's just that they're giving their children sugary cereals, you know, um, uh, chocolate drinks in the morning with lots of sugar, heavy, starchy bread, you know, and all these different things. And then you see the difference in their behavior. You know, we talk about we, we have this uh, attention deficit disorder. Then they have medicine for that. 
You know, so it's like we, the food is created to cause a problem so, we, so you can come up with a medicine that's going to just do a, be just like a Band-Aid and, and then have side effects. <laughs> and then you have to start taking more medicine so you end up with other diseases. Where, where if you start your child early, all my children know how to cleanse their system. They know, how, they know when they're not feeling right what's causing it. They can tell, oh, I ate this and this is the reason why this is happening. So when you teach them at a very young age, they understand what's going on. So when they see something on TV or they see something on the billboard or they see something on the side of the uh, bus or something in the, in the uh, supermarket or at school or on TV, it's just constantly coming at them. So you have to be able to s sit down with them and say, okay, you see this, this is what's going on, but this is what really needs to happen. So if you go this route, this is what's gonna happen to you. Look, look at your auntie, look at your uncle, look at this, look at that. And if you go this route, you're gonna be able to be more strong, more healthy. Look at your um, grandfather, look at your, you know, look at different people, so giving them examples. And what you do, you create a way for your children to make uh, uh, choices in the very beginning. So a lot of children, they don't have that choice. A lot of us as adults, we don't have that choice because we haven't been exposed to the choices. So that's what the African Culture and Wellness Festival is about. We have plenty of workshops on herbal medicine, natural ways of taking care of the hair and skin so we can get away from these chemicals and talk about what the chemicals are actually doing to the body. Showing them different types of fitness, making them understand who they are as African people. And when you understand who you are as an African, you start to move away from those things that are anti-African or anti-life, and you start to, um, uh, uh, you know, make a better path for yourself. And then you become more disciplined because you're understanding that like, now I've learned about the white refined sugar, for example. Now that I know about it, I'm making it, now I have a choice to say I'm going to take a, a, a candy snack or I'm going to eat some fruit. Now you have the choice. So it's really up to you. So now we have to deal with that habitual habits, those habits, and then try to, you know, wean ourselves from it. Sometimes as adults, it takes us time. We love our sugar. It's a drug. And if you go without your drug, you go through withdrawals. Ask anybody who tries to get off of sugar. Try to get off of sugar. After one day, two days, you start shaking. Just like getting off of cocaine or crack cocaine or any of these heavy her heroin, all these her heavy drugs. The sugar is even more of a heavy drug than, than the heroin. It's easier to get off of heroin than it is to get off of sugar. So you see how it affects the body, it affects the behavior, our energy levels, we, we, we get high, then we sh crash down, you know. And there's so many different things that um, we go through that we don't necessarily have to go through. So when you understand what it is, you've been taught, you recognize what it is, then you can do something about it. But if you don't know what it is, you can't do anything about it. Well, Dr. Gass, how mm -hmm. do we get the consciousness to be aware of uh, the things that need to be done right? that we need to do right with ourselves when it comes to our diet and the way we live. Yeah, you know, it, most of the time it's, it's a very simple process that if you're eating something, you know, or well, let's say you get a stomach ache. That stomach ache means that you consume something you should not have done. So just look at what you were eating and then eliminate that from the diet. Once you do that, you now have a choice between the good feeling you had and the bad feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. And rather than to look at it to say that, okay, this is basically what's on the market to eat. And giving in to that situation. So anytime that the body is going through any kind of trauma, whatever it is, there's always something that you was eating to put that in there. A good example would be like this. If you want diabetes, put it on your plate and eat it. If you want diabetes, put right. it on your plate and eat it. Yeah, and you will get <laughs> diabetes. If you want cancer, put it on your plate and eat it, and you will get cancer. You know, this is basically for any, anything that you can think of that is happening to the body, is you put it on there and then eat it and see if you get it. Or if you've already done that, then the best thing to do is that since you have the situation, let's say cancer, for instance, 
then what is it that does not give you cancer and how, how can you eat something or take something internally to get rid of the cancer of what you took internally to get the cancer. And that's basically, you know, the system gets dirty inside, you clean it up. When you eat them and you mess up the dishes, you don't take them and throw them out and break them up, you clean them up. You know, so you clean the body the same way you clean that that is on the outside. Now that, don't, that doesn't only go for the foods that, you know, you put in uh, your mouth. You know, I usually say it's about 12 ways, you know, that we can eat. And if every one of them is going to have an effect. If you have a nervous condition, that is an effect from something that you're doing. Uh, if you do something to get rid of that nervous condition, then it becomes a part of your being. So the nervous condition is also a part of your being. So it's like whatever you do in life, no matter what it is, if it becomes a part of your being, that's what you were eating. So the way you think, uh, that makes a difference. A good example would be, uh, I'm going to say, the white world. If you mention the word peace, to white people, they see it different than make, using the word peace to black people. See, if I was talking about let's make peace, that means we're going to earn out our difference and talk about them and that's going to be it. But when a white person hears the word peace, they mean dropping a bomb, pulling a gun, shooting somebody. To create and, order. Yeah, mm -hmm. once you destroy it and it's dead, now you made peace. So it's the differences that we have to go through to get our bodies back to the situation, you know, that they were in. Yeah. Mm. So all these will be talked about at the event. And then yeah. we're going to have yes. Muta Baruka also coming in. Where is he coming from? What Jamaica. Would he, He's coming from, be Jamaica. Coming from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay, and then you're going to have a concert and a tour. Um, tell me about those. Yeah, so um, let's go with tomorrow. We're going to have the opening ceremonies, and um, it's going to be at the Nubuke Foundation in East Lake Gone near Minsvik Hotel. And it's going to be from 1 to 4 p.m. And it's a fundraiser plate of 50 Ghana cities. And we're going to have a vegan all-star cuisine. Some very, very, very good food. So like what you brought? Uh... Yeah, like some, something like what we um, had Dr. Aris bring, the raw foodist. But we're going to have a lot of different things, uh, different varieties of food. Uh, um, Ghanaian, Nigerian, international um, cuisine. And all, all vegan, vegan, all vegetarian, and very, very tasty. We have some of the best vegan chefs here, in, right here in Ghana, believe it or not. So, um, like I said, it's, it's a fundraiser, so it is 50 Ghana CDs. So it's not like, oh, wow, it's a lot of money. It's just that we need to be able to sustain our event, or these, these platforms. It's not only me that's doing this type of event. We don't get sponsorship when you're talking about health, when you're talking about African culture. You know, it's just, you, you, it's just not what people feel that it's going to make money. But we have to change that. And I'm really glad that Joy has decided to come on board and, and, and help us to expose that. Because a lot of people are going to benefit, you know, from, uh, from these type of platforms. So um, tomorrow, the Bouquet Foundation, um, Dr. Goss is going to be the keynote speaker. And we're going to have a lot of other powerful speakers speaking on Pan-Africanism, wellness, we're going to have poets, storytelling, you know, music, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a strong kickoff to the actual festival, which is the next day. So we start with uh, February 11th um, in the morning with a Healthy Life Walk Challenge. And we call it a challenge because you're going from Ayaminsa Toll Booth all the way to Aburi Botanical Garden. You're going to climb the hill. Climb the mountains. From the, the mountain. From the Ayaminsa Toll wow. Booth all the way to the Iberi Botanical <laughs> Gardens. And it is a challenge. Yeah, and I know people who do it, because I live in the mountains, so I see them do it all the time. But, um, you know, we, we want to, you know, put, and, and, and even some of the people I know, they're even like 60 and 70 years old, even going from Oyarifa all the way to the mountain. So we, ha and, these, and these people, I, I, I would want to bring this one brother one day. He's, um, he's uh, 60, no, about 70, he's 70 years old. 
And he, he did that. And I was like, you know what? We need to make that a challenge. So from 6 a.m. to 9, uh, we'll do the Healthy Life, Life Walk Challenge. It's about seven kilometers, kilometers. And then um, we, <laughs> we, start <laughs> off, <laughs> we start off the uh, festival at 9 o'clock with different workshops, African uh, aerobics, African aerobics with African music and movements. We'll have yoga, but more of a comedic, which is ancient Egyptian type yoga, which is where it originated. We're going to have um, capoeira, which is um, uh, uh, African martial arts. And you'll have the, the um, teacher African here. martial arts, African like what the Brazilians do. Yeah, no, but, it, but it came from Angola. Okay. To Brazil. So we're going to have Dr. Campbell to come on tomorrow to, to actually talk to you about that. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Be great. So we'll have you same time tomorrow and then on Friday. Yeah. yeah, we'll have um, Ken Bone to come tomorrow, and then he's going to talk more. He's a very interesting um, uh, brother to talk to, but he'll talk about the festival but as well as like the Capitan and the history behind it. Because when we think about martial arts, we think about you know, Bruce Lee and all the Kung Fu and things like that, but it, it actually originated in Africa. You wow. know? So um, lots of stuff on wellness, uh, herbal classes, like I said, the... Um, the hair and skin care, dealing with natural ways of um, meats. And then we have some also, also some food demonstrations on how to do some plant-based, you know, um, vegetarian foods. And very nice. And, and just showing some things that is not so hard. Is we, you can really come up with some nice food, simple but very tasty and, and available. And available. Everything that we do is available here, you know, in Ghana. And then um, we have the Peanut Butter Kids uh, Art Station. That's one of the year-round programs that we have. And it's uh, to do with um, preserving the arts of Africa. So we'll have um, uh, wood carving, uh, beading, tie and dye. We'll have um, organic gardening. Um, we'll have someone do some meditation with the children, uh, capoeira, traditional African dance, and a lot of different fun things you know, for the children to do. And then um, we have uh, four different expos. We have the um, Vegan All-Stars Food Court. We have the uh, Natural African Beauty Expo. We have the Hiller's Village. And then we have the African Marketplace. And this year, I donated the African Marketplace to the uh, people who had the, 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 the tragedy in La, from the um, La expo explosion, the by explosion. The, um, the gas explosion. Uh, one of the vendors had been with us the whole time, and I just felt like, Okay, well, what is it I can do? I don't have money, but I can do something. Can do something. So I donated the African marketplace to them, and they're going to also use some of their funds as a way to help a lot of the victims who died, their families, and also we got a, still a lot of the burn victim, victims inside of the hospital at Colombo. So um, it's going to be a very, very nice event. So that's from 9 to 6 for the expos and the workshops, and then at night from 8 to 12, well, let's go back. The expo is free. It's just a gate fee to get into the Botanical Gardens, a brewery, and um, it's two CDs. Then at night, we have from 8 to 12, the concert, the, what we call the Regeneration Concert. And we have, and that's where we start in Muta Baruka. We're going to have Ambole. We're going to have um, Eli Vava, uh, Jawai. Those are our main, you know, artists. And, and what's common about these artists is that they're vegetarian. Yeah, all of them. All of them are vegetarian, and they, and they, are also very strong Pan-Africanists. They really believe in the vision of Africa being free and liberated. Well, Dr. Goss, um, mm -hmm. what you say about um, rejuvenation and wellness and African culture, and, uh, do you also say or tell the same message to the, the brothers living in, in, in America? Yes. You tell them the same message. Do they buy it? Because we see a lot of hip-hop Rick Ross and all that. He looks big. He does, I don't <laughs> think he eats a lot of pizza and all that. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the American diet, you know, is probably the worst diet in the world. Uh, I would say, you know, that when it comes to uh, longevity, the, the Americans may drop dead faster than anybody else, you know, that. And definitely age 25 uh, is usually the beginning of the ending of the lifespan while you're still alive for most of the African brothers that are there. Because by the time they are 30, they may be impotent. Mm -hmm. They will be what? Impotent. 
You mean sexually? Sexually. Mm -hmm. Impotent. Yes. Dirty. <laughs> Africa, dirty you are hard mm -hmm. Right. And uh, see, that's be, something yeah. that should not really happen to anybody under 100. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, the, but at the same time, you know, you do have the brothers that, you know, that basically can lead the way at least on that part of the health thing. Because we do have products, you know, that basically can straighten that out. That's all. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Dr. Goss. <laughs> I like you. So, you know, if there's a problem, there's always an answer, you know, for that problem. So I love that. Where there's a problem, there's always an answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you sound like one of those African fetish we have around. They tell you you bring a problem, we're able to answer. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, and thanks for passing through, Dr. Paul Giles. And, um, I want to mention his birthday. And uh, today is his birthday. We're celebrating his birthday February 11th, which is actually the festival. He's uh, turning 80 years happy old. Happy birthday yeah. in advance. Yes, you're, yes. Ten, you're turning 80 years old. 80, yes. Yeah. You don't look like quitting, <laughs> do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and thanks for passing through the studio, Dr. Um, Sharita Yazid. And um, they are having this great festival. I'll make sure that I keep my 50 Ghana in my pocket. I'll be there in the bouquet, East Lagon, and I will get to be part of the festival. The fourth annual African Culture and Wellness Festival 2017. It's on the theme, building the solid foundation for our future global young African leaders. Look, they've, they've empowered me so much, influenced me. I'm speaking now slang like American, you know. <laughs> uh, that's how it goes. And um, I wish you well in Ghana. Uh, we hope that we'll see you one more time outside the studios before you leave Ghana. We need to have lunch. Yeah. vegan lunch right? yes <laughs> <laughs> well so we're taking a break now but let's um, go to do entertainment but before then workers at the National Labor Commission they are protesting the termination of local union chairman uh, of theirs and also the senior officers uh, as well as um, a poor service conditions at uh, the Commission and they're so far calling for the removal of the executive secretary of the Commission Charles Adongo Bawadria Maxwell Agbagba is on the beat and is joining us live. Uh, good morning to you, Maxwell. Dr. What do you Sessler, have on the, the subject? National Labor Commission, as you can rightly see right now. Um, there's a red band, you know, over here with some padlocks. Uh, the workers here are protesting over the leadership um, abilities of um, the uh, executive secretary and then um, the chairman of the National Labor Commission. Second issue they're also protesting um, over has to do with the termination of the appointment of um, their local union chairman and um, another officer here at the National Labor Commission. They're also protesting over um, the state of their offices um, at Takrade. Now, as you can rightly see, this office is locked. There's nobody inside, no worker has actually gotten the opportunity to be inside this office right now. So as it stands right now, work here is at a standstill. I have um, a senior relations officer, senior industrial relations officer here with me. Um, some workers are also here with us. Um, sir, your name again? My name is Eric Omaneyabua. Eric Omaneyabua. Tell us, today is uh, Thursday. You're supposed to be at work here at the National Labor Commission, but here your offices are locked. And uh, I, from what we've from indications, it looks like the workers are the ones who have locked um, these offices. Yes. You want to throw more light on this? Yeah, well, uh, this is started just yesterday when uh, some employees were terminated. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the, appointment was terminated. The, uh, the appointments were terminated. Mm -hmm. So in reaction to that, the workers decided that, look, we are also going to sit down in solidarity of our uh, staff who have been terminated. So that's why uh, they have locked up this place. Okay. So we gather that the appointment of the local um, union chairman yes. and then um, another officer. Senior industrial relations officer. Why? What are the reasons? Well, the chairman, we've had issues with our current chairman, who used to be the former uh, executive secretary. Mm. So we petitioned to the uh, Ministry of Employment and Labor somewhere 2004. The, the 2014, sorry. Okay. Then attempts were made a committee was set up, and then they listened to us. To date, to date, there hasn't been, a, a, the outcome of the committee has not been communicated to us. Mm. He managed to bring this new executive secretary, and what he's doing is to hunt those who champion the petition that was sent to the ministry against his chairmanship. Mm. So, well, after that, he tried to transfer some of the employees who championed this to Takrade. So, the, wait, who are we talking about here? Who are you accusing of which hunting? The a chairman, mm. Edward Brokubodu, okay. is behind all these things. Mm. 
And he is using the current executive secretary, Charles Adonko Bawadia, to champion his interests by way of frustrating some of us and also transfer some of these things. And all these things are going on. We've had issues. We've written a letter to the presidency just three days ago. But the outcome is that some of us have been terminated because they think that they have refused to go on the posting. Meanwhile, there are issues that the Mother Union has uh, picked up with the, the commission and they are still ongoing. Okay, earlier you mentioned to me that um, the termination of the appointment is the last straw that broke the camel's back. Yes. Uh, what other issues, you know, um, have triggered um, this, um, you know, protest? Okay, you see, the, the key issue is that we try as much as possible as employees to unionize here so that we will have a better conditions of service for ourselves. Attempts were made to block that. And this thing started about eight years ago. Attempts were made to block the, to block the front yes. of um, the, the union. union? They didn't want the union to exist. And so what they did was that they would frustrate the process. First, they tried to make sure that we don't get a collective bargaining certificate. But we had to go to the uh, labor office to demand that before we got it. Now, after that, we have submitted, the union have submitted a proposal to the uh, management of National Labor Commission. And the next thing is to constitute the standing negotiating committee to negotiate on that. Up to now, in spite of all the reminders, they have not been able to do that. But so we don't have anything that will guide the relationship between the workers and management. So. But that, that sounds a bit, you know, ironic. Uh, if you are working at the National Labor Commission, we're supposed to be advocating for unionization. That's, that's point. And that's point. they are rather stifling, you know, uh, um, the growth of unions. That's a bit ironic. Yeah, it's just explain uh -huh. the leadership style of the chairman, who used, in fact, he was the first substantive uh, executive secretary of the commission. The one who came, his predecessor uh, was acting okay. for some time. And for almost six years, he worked with us. He did not see the need to ensure that the workers' conditions are improved. And because of that, we decided to unionize so that we can have better conditions for ourselves. And still, he's making sure that we don't get all these things in place. Okay, another um, triggering factor to this protest is um, uh, there's your conditions of service. You say it is very appalling. Yes. What exactly about it? Well, as you can see, they asked me on, on air, what are the grievance procedures? We don't have. Why? There's no law, there's no document that we say that if something should happen, this is how we are going to go about it. We don't have.